Welcome to the Dr. Helmut Epp Oral History Project. The History Project highlights Dr. Epp's tenure over the last four decades as a faculty member, department chair, dean, and provost. We hope this project illustrates to future generations Dr. Epp's significant contributions to the modern history of DePaul University. His contributions continue today as a faculty member in the College of Computing and Digital Media. This trailer presents just a small sampling of the 21 interviews and more than 11 hours of recorded audio. To hear the complete set of interviews, read the transcripts, or find out more about Dr. Epp, please visit tinyurl.com slash epphistory or click the link under this video. I think what wasn't often visible to most people was that Dr. Epp really cared about the students. He was always thinking, well, you know, what can we, what can we give our students that go, are going to give them the tools they need to be successful in their own life? I went to a Dell retreat about a year and a half ago, and one of the vice presidents at Dell came over to me and asked me if Dr. Epp was still working at DePaul, and I said, actually, at the time, he was still my boss. I said, absolutely, he's still my boss. He said, uh, please send him my regards. He said, I remember going through school in the 80s, and, and he left deep impression on me, and, and I still remember his teaching today. I had the great privilege to sit in close proximity to him for seven years, and I saw him mentor faculty council. I saw him mentor faculty and staff, and he didn't have the occasion during those seven years to see too many students, uh, which was always at the heart of his work. I think he always had a student in mind, whatever he did. But I think it's that part that I wish others had seen as close hand as I did. He had an imprint on so many of us, and... Um, he cares deeply about this place in a way that it's infectious. But nobody at DePaul, whether they agreed with him or disagreed with him, ever questioned his love for DePaul. You learned very, very quickly. He loved the idea of what DePaul is, and ultimately DePaul is an idea more than anything else. The buildings come and go. The curriculum comes and go. What's most foundational about DePaul is this idea of of an excellent education for those whose families can't always give them an excellent education. That idea felt to him like a worthy peace in life and goal to pursue. And he wanted DePaul's aspirations to become real. And nobody at DePaul ever questioned that. They never questioned his integrity, his sense of mission, his sense of purpose, and his wanting good for the ultimate purpose of the organization. That was so palpable through everything. You know, he could have worked at any institution. He could have written a ticket at many, many different career paths, but he stayed with DePaul his whole life, not just because DePaul gave him the room to build his college. He stayed with DePaul his whole life because he believed what he was building the college for. So certainly when we came to the end of Vision 2012, which I think everyone considers to be a tremendous success, if we look at the success of Goal 6, which again was the Vincentian and Catholic identity goals, uh, certainly the success of that goal in particular was largely uh, due to the efforts of, and support of Dr. Epp. What's interesting to acknowledge is, is, is that no, Dr. Epp is, is not Catholic, but again, he had an incredible understanding of the importance of these issues, and he dedicated himself to support this personally. It's not as if he delegated it to me or delegated it to someone else. He certainly saw this as integral to his responsibility as provost. And anything that Dr. Epp ever considered to be integral to his responsibilities as provost, he took a direct hand in. I think that was one of the marks of his leadership. He's a very focused person. Uh, from as chair and to dean and then as provost, the breadth of issues that came to him were always, there were, there were always many, but he managed to um, distill things to uh, the, the basics and then identify what was really important. It's one of the strengths that I think he had as an instructor. We, we used to do evaluations for the certificate programs, and I mentioned they were always team taught. He was always either the first, second, at the most, third of the group of faculty. Students always liked his lectures, always felt that they learned quite a bit from him. Uh, and including very difficult material. So that, that ability to focus and distill things, I think, served him well in, in just in everything that he did. 
I think this attitude is reflected in his leadership style. He's, as you would expect, uh, very low fuss, very low bureaucracy. His, his attitude was always, uh, we have a challenge, we need to meet it, let's see what we can do. He's very collaborative, always has been, and uh, just fun to work with. I mean, he was not a red tape, bureaucratic type of dean. You wouldn't, you wouldn't expect that. He was never the sort of leader who told people uh, what to do. Ever. I can't remember his ever giving anybody you know, what might be called a direct order. He didn't work that way. What he tried to do was find people who were interested in the things that he was interested in and to support them as, as best he could. But just over and over again, I mean, every single thing that we did, he was such a driving force. I mean, most of us were following in, in those years. He, he had the ideas. He had the drive. He got people behind him to support it. He got people in the administration here to, to help make that vision come true. He, he reminds me of, <laughs> he probably wouldn't like this, but he reminds me of, um, in a way, Orson Welles. Uh, Orson Welles was probably the, one of the greatest filmmakers to ever live. And Welles is, is really noted for making his actors feel like they're the only people that exist. But Helmut certainly has the, the gift of making you feel like you're, you are the only person that exists and the, the only person that can help what, you know, fix this problem or take on this task that no one else has seemed to be able to conquer. And uh, it's a real gift to make you feel that way. I think he's a principled man. Actually, in those years when we were both deans and something would be developing the university that gave us pause, our conversations were often about a principle that was being compromised. Bright, analytic, and then principled. And of course, one of the foundational principles, I think, for any university is honesty and, and truth, and he lived those. Oh, I think his legacy will go on for uh another hundred years at least. I mean, I think that, I think he's done, not only has he created these academic programs that I think will take us into the future, but I think he's created the processes that, and the feeling that we need to be an institution that is always looking at what's the next good idea and not being afraid of what's the next good idea. And also doing it in the sense of what's the best quality we can have. I think his his legacy is one that will be increasingly appreciated as time goes forward because the decisions were right. And so as the players who were around at the moment and may have bumped up to get against him or against each other, whatever, whatever tensions there were in the launching of, of some of these once 20 years from now, None of those people or many of those people won't be here, and the, the institutional aspect will be here, and it will be for the betterment of DePaul. Because his decisions were so sound, I think the farther we are away from them, looking back on it, everybody will wonder why anybody would have objected in the first place, because they really were the right thing to do. Well, let me, first of all, make it clear that I've never considered myself a good administrator. To me, the most critical thing is to have good people, to give them your trust and support. And that's mainly to the extent that I've been successful at, at, at some things. And I have to admit, without being immodest, that I've been successful at a number of things. But I know in each instance, that it's because I had some good people working with me. And this is really not false modesty because uh, I'm not saying necessarily that those good people would have done those things without me there. There is something called leadership. And to some extent, leadership means that you go ahead and do things even when people are not so comfortable about it. Do you have any final thoughts you'd like to share on your career thus thoughts. far? That sounds so terminal. <laughs> or on your career thus far at DePaul with new chapters think, yet to be determined? I, th I think it is okay. I mean, those, those negative things that we referred to before, they don't occur in my mind very often. I mean, because 
you know, I just have to look at the CDM or the school. I've done, I think, some constructive things for, for the university, and the university in turn has given me the chance to do them. That's non-trivial. It really is not. I mean, the, they have left me. <laughs> they didn't get in my way, and they were helpful, and they were nice to work with, most, most people. And so that's great. What can a person ask for than that?